Hey everybody, Joe here. This represents three different sensors that are in a person's eye. There's a sensor that senses red light, a sensor that senses green light, and a sensor that senses blue light. To be more accurate, light is measured in frequencies, just like your radio stations. And so this, let's just say this is a rainbow in the sky. And I know I did a bad job at that, but that's what it represents. Each of these different colors on this rainbow would be measured in different frequencies. The red sensor senses the frequency up here and then you see red. It causes you to see red. So this sensor senses a different frequency than this one. This sensor senses the frequency right in here. And so this rainbow is just a range of light frequencies that have been separated and then the light shines everywhere, but this sensor doesn't sense this over here. It's not made to do that. They respond maybe the most to this frequency, but then then less and less to, to these other frequencies that are in here. So the red is going to sense this area right here just as much as this sensor is going to sense this area right here. They're both going to sense it. The combination of these two sensors at the same time in your brain causes you to see yellow. As this sensor senses less, this one senses more. As this one senses less, this one senses more. And so we see when we look at a rainbow, very consistent intensity of color. We see all the in-between colors that are not exactly in tune with, with our three sensors. So you have um, a red and a green light, literally a red and a green and a blue light in each little tiny pixel of your screen. And so depending on the brightness of each of those three lights in each pixel, so there's literally millions of them on the screen, that will cause the resulting colors that you see. I put together this quick color wheel using the same color system. Here the red mixes with the green to get the yellow, the green mixes with the blue to get what we call the cyan, and then the red mixes with the blue to, to get what we call the magenta. So that's light, but paint is different. With paint, we can't use these three colors to get yellow. We can't mix the red and the green and get yellow. So we need a different set of primaries. We already have red right there. Let's throw a yellow on here. I'm just gonna paint over what I have. Ignore this now. Okay, red, yellow, and blue. So I can mix these. And now I can get a green with this yellow and blue. Why then can we not use red, yellow, and blue in all systems then? Okay, well, on, on your TV screen, think about it. How are you going to make green if all you have is yellow and yellow is going to make both of your sensors active? When you try to mix a yellow and a blue, you're going to make all three of the sensors active and you're not going to get just that green sensor to be active. The only way to cause you to see green is to have a green frequency on that green sensor that's not, that's not producing these frequencies over here. That's why they have to be different. Okay, so then the next natural question is, okay, well then why is paint different? Why can't we use the red, green, and the blue? How come it doesn't make yellow when you mix red and green? Well, when you mix paint, it's, it's like you're putting marbles in a pile or in a bucket and shaking them all together. They're overlapped, they're on top of each other. Now, as things get smaller, they get more transparent. Yellow paint, has all these particles piled up and there's yellow behind yellow behind yellow and so it's transparent and you can see the yellow shining from behind but if you take out what's behind and put a dark color there then then you're darkening that yellow paint is different because it's all piled up and transparent so filtering is happening so just like in nature a big blue wave filters the light so that you'll see that turquoise color shining through it but you you won't see like you know red you won't see it filters out colors from the white light coming from the sun so paint does the same thing it's it's just another natural little object a little particle and and it's a color 
So these mixes are results of it piling on top of itself. That's why it's different than light. It's not just shining side by side. You can do this experiment. You know, I, I made a top. You can, you can make a top that you can spin, you know, and you, and you make it flat and you color one half of it blue, one half of it yellow. And you would expect it to be green when you spin it because really rapidly, you know, it's spinning those colors together. But it's not green, it's gray because it's only emitting that light in a side-by-side -side fashion. It's, it's not overlapping it. That's why paint is different. So now there's another primary system that uses these right here. Magenta, cyan, and yellow called the CMYK system. So cyan, magenta, yellow, I said I'm out of order. That's the same reason. It's putting these colors on top of white, of white paper. And so they're transparent and it's shining light through them. It's just like paint, but it's only one color on top of another. It's not both ways. So the blue and the yellow. It, that system might make green by putting the yellow down and then putting blue on top of it and not the yellow again. It doesn't do that. So paint would just pile it all together. The CMYK is a much more calculated system that will just layer it real thin. So now, to show you exactly what I'm talking about, let's take blue and in that system it's more of a light blue, you know, but that, that's okay. This will still work. Cyan, you know, it's, uh, if, if I layer this real thin over this yellow, of course it's going to make green because that's how the green is made. And notice that this green is going to be a more vibrant green than what I'm able to make just by mixing them because this one is only blue on top of yellow. It's not yellow on top of blue where this is both. And so over here, I get a little more of a saturated green. Now that's why those different systems exist. It, it all fits together. It's, it's one system. You know, light is light and it behaves in a certain way and is predictable. So there is no set of primary colors that can produce all of them. If I took this system, red, green, blue, and I tried to produce every color, when I shine the two, two of these colors to try to simulate yellow like your computer does, well, that is not going to be as exact as a true yellow frequency coming from a natural yellow object. When you use only three colors to start with, the secondaries that you make are never as pure as if you just find them in nature. The best way to handle color mixing is to understand that if you need a really pure color, you just have to find it. If you're going to mix, the mix is always less saturated than the colors you start from. I do like to use red, yellow, and blue because I don't have a lot of need for a, a, a real brilliant magenta in a lot of landscapes unless I'm making maybe some bright flowers and then I'll go find it. So you can see my setup here. Look, I have red and I have yellow and blue and I have white and then here I have a magenta. This is from Sherwin-Williams. It's just a little sample core. I'll use this for my bright green. If I need an extra bright green, then I'm going to probably mix yellow with this tube of phthalo green made by a company called Caltint. So I'll just dab this little bit of pigment off the top. This is pigment, not paint. I can mix it with paint to get really vibrant colors. This green doesn't come from mixing blue and yellow. This green comes from finding the, the tint, you know, and, and I can mix this with white too so that you can see what it looks like. I use all the colors of the rainbow as primaries. I don't just use the three, but sometimes it's to my advantage to speed through a project if I can narrow down my picture to just three. Here, let's make some dirt. Here, I usually use a mix of, of uh, all, all my primaries just to get a brown and then just add white. So here, let's put red and yellow and we've got the green starting to mix in there. So there's millions of little color combinations happening 
that are not going to happen if I pre-mix this brown. That's another reason that I like to use primaries. Okay, so then I'll take a white and highlight it, you know, and maybe we have here, let's put some, put some more red because this is, this is looking kind of green. And I'll make dirt this way. And, and what it does is maybe just give the effect of a lot of texture and things happening on that dirt that I wouldn't get if I just mixed, pre-mixed one, one brown. So that's the value of maybe using primaries and, and mixing them like I like to do, but it doesn't mean it has to be done that way. Here we go. This is the light color wheel. This is not paint. So this is valuable in painting because you can know that this color is made from these two sensors in your eye reacting. And likewise, you can know that this color is made from these two sensors reacting in your eye. Regardless of whether it's one monochromatic frequency of yellow or because it's your computer screen displaying red and green. Regardless, it's the two sensors reacting. So this is what happens is those sensors can get numb. You know, they, they kind of dull down. And if you look at a color for a long time, the sensors become less sensitive, just like listening to loud music for a long time. Your ears start to get numb to it. You look at a real brilliant color like red and immediately your red sensor is going to start becoming numbed to that red acti that activity vibrating that sensor, right? Well, so then the green and the blue are still fresh. They're still ready to see full power. Then you look at something that's white. Just look at a white screen. And then all of a sudden you're seeing this color because because that white is displaying all of these. It's displaying all three of, of these, but the red is deadened, so it's not seeing that now. That's why, you, that's why those optical illusions work, because you see the one color, it numbs your eye to it, and then when you look at something that has all of them, that numbed sensor is less active, and you see the resulting opposite, that is the other two or the other one sensor. All three of the primaries of light, like on this wheel, all three of the sensors at the same time make white or make gray if that white is not bright. So equal, equal reaction from all of the sensors in your eye cause a colorless response. You, all you see is the brightness or the darkness and, and just shades of gray or white. In nature, this, this is very helpful because how am I going to make this look like water that's reflecting the sky? Am I going to just take this color and add it to that water? No. If I do that, this is paint and this has yellow in it. And when I mix yellow and blue paint, I get green. And I know that light doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do is use gray. All of this reflection in here is a combination of seeing the blue water with the added reflection of the orange light from the sky. And the result of that would be gray. So all I do is add gray to my blue to produce that reflection. And so somebody that doesn't see the process of this might look and say, oh cool, I like how you did the orange reflection on the blue water. But all I did was put gray on the blue. It's not orange at all. All right, let's move on to some Q&A. Okay, on uh, last week's video of me delivering my mural of Jesus Resurrection to this little church in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, so Julian Palumbo, I hope I said that right, comments on this and, and is saying this looks like Akiana Kramerich's Prince of Peace painting. And the answer is, is yes, I tried to model it after that. And for those of you who don't know already, I posted a, a lot of things about that on my Facebook page. You can go to Mural Joe on Facebook. I posted a sketch to start out with where I was trying to get the lightness of the smile and it looked really weird and a lot of people gave me some feedback and then I did an adjusted drawing. It, it took me some time and multiple tries to try to get it 
to where I thought it at least resembled that painting. I still don't think that it, it's just like it, but that was my goal. I was trying. It was hard to turn it into a smile because that's that face is a very straight face in that picture, but I think Akiyana's story is super inspiring and I just thought it would be really fun to model the face after that one. I thought it was cool. Paula Ellis says, uh, there's, there's two people I'd like to meet in life, Clint Eastwood and Muriel Joe. That is a super high compliment, thank you so much. And um, I think that's hilarious that I just got compared to Clint Eastwood. I, I, I just appeared in the same sentence as Clint Eastwood. Karen Hitchman is saying, as I become more accomplished, more and more people want me to teach. I'm imagining teaching my mother and neighbor to start with. That, that is so cool. You know, the, the best things that I learned were, um, were from unlikely sources. So often we as learners want to learn from only the super experts, but so many people have bits and pieces of important knowledge. I feel like if I'm willing to just glean what I can from anybody and everybody, then I end up with a better wealth of knowledge because of that. I know as a person that likes to post how-to videos that I can be concerned about if, if am, I, am I at a level where I ought to be teaching this and, and forget that the most valuable thing is just that is just that you're willing to give somebody a hand up to the next level. We all have things to teach each other and learn from each other. The truth is, is people notice different things and I've learned many valuable things from, from like I said, unlikely sources. Uh, a lot of people commenting on my shakes, you know, that, uh, that that's, uh, I, I don't think it's a big deal, you know, it's just a funny thing. No, I, I haven't checked my thyroid hormones and I probably won't be taking vitamin B pills, but, but uh, you know, I, I think that's all probably good advice. And so, like I said, good advice comes from unlikely sources, right? So maybe you're all right, I don't know. So uh, again, thank you for watching my video and I'll see you next week.